a very successful night tonight for Lafayette as they snap a three game losing streak and for the very first time since their game against Princeton November of last year all five starters left the court tonight in double digits. Seth Henricks led that pack with 19 total points. Parkland enters rare air in the record books becoming only the second school in the state to bring home both a boys and a girls volleyball title in the same year. District 11 also getting some spotlight on their volleyball programs as the area now holds three of the five state titles awarded this year. Amongst the sea of maroon and white here tonight, there were more than a few dots of Wildcat blue as Villanova fans flocked out here to see their favorite Big Five Philly team. Of course, a local connection for those Wildcat fans as well as Liberty grad Darren Hilliard is rostered on the Villanova team, giving everyone here in attendance the chance to root for the Lehigh Valley. Although Emma Workowski is still very young, she's certainly not dreaming small. In fact, the 14-year-old says that racing alongside of Olympians and Olympic hopefuls here at the Valley Preferred Cycling Center Friday nights has actually added more fuel to her fire and made her realize her ultimate goal, sagging an Olympic medal for herself someday. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Trackside with Marty Nostein. I'm your host Breland Moore alongside Olympic gold medalist and of course the Valley Preferred Cycling Center's Executive Director Marty Nostein. Marty first on ice is walking and we're going to take a break here and throw it down to Breland Moore. Thanks, guys. Well, we're very lucky that there it doesn't look too serious over there. But right now I'm joined alongside Bobby Lee, who was our winner of the men's missing out. But of course, the winner of a lot of things. But first off, let's talk about that missing out a little bit. Uh, blowing away your competition there at the end. Take me through it. Well, uh, it was a good battle between the uh, Maloya push bikers. I think they're here with five riders. And so uh, we came down to the finish with uh, with two of them. So I had to try and uh, find, a, find a moment when they were looking the other way and see if I could catch them by surprise by going a little bit early. And uh, yeah, I just caught Akeem looking the wrong way and uh, and tried to go long, and it worked out. And speaking of a no sign, we have one side with Breland Moore. Thanks, Jim. I'm here alongside Marty Nostein, who is obviously the executive director here at the Valley Preferred Cycling Center. And tonight is Air Products final night. First off, Marty, can you explain a little bit about the Air Products program to our viewers at home? Yeah, the Air Products program is really the backbone of this organization. It's a program, a developmental cycling program that's offered to uh, kids for free uh, to our community. It's been in existence nearly 40 years, almost as long as the velodrome has been in existence, and it's produced over 28,000 graduates since the beginning, including nine Olympic team members. Two teams from the Lehigh Valley took the 200-mile journey to Johnstown this weekend for the PIAA State Volleyball Championships. First up in A, Bethlehem Catholic took the court against District 10 champs Fort LaBeouf. Fort LaBeouf takes the first set, but Becca comes out strong in the second. Jessica Atia with the touch on the ball, and the Hawks rise up to win the second set, 25-17. to Fort LaBeouf makes a comeback and narrowly grabs the third set, but Becca will take the fourth. Jessica Atia grabs an ace here, and this match will go into a tiebreaker fifth set. It's a battle all fifth set, but Bethlehem Catholic will reign supreme. Jessica Atia with the block, and Bethlehem Catholic takes home the double A volleyball state championship title with a final score of three to two. It is an amazing feeling. I'm so proud of the girls and the coaches and uh, you know the Becca administration coming here and supporting us. This is not just for the girls volleyball team, this is for the Becca Catholic family, Bethlehem Catholic family. All of us worked worked so hard in practice and in games and we give everything we give it our all we give up our time and now we're here and it's the reward that we've been waiting for i'm not playing in college and this is like my last game and i'm just ha i'm so happy we went out like this i couldn't be any better the triple a girls followed with a battle of the unbeatens a 27 and 0 parkland squad was matched up against familiar state tournament foe hempfield who held a record of 23 and 0. The Hempfield Black Knights come out strong and take the first set, but Parkland fights back. Here comes Erica Foose with the kill, and the Trojans will take this second set 25 to 22. Third set now, and Parkland really starts picking up the momentum. Hempfield fights, but there's no fending off Brooke Robertson. She comes in with a massive kill, and the Trojans win the set 25 to 20. Once Parkland found their groove, there was just no stopping them. Sophomore Megan Shaw grabs an ace. Her squad will win the fourth set, and the Parkland Trojans become the Pennsylvania Triple A state champions. The final score, Parkland three, Hempfield one. So this is truly a team, a team effort completely. 
from the coaches, the managers, the players. That was a unified group to go against a great Hanfield program and a great team. This feels so great. I can't, I can't even put it into words. Um, finishing my senior year with this type of win, it just feels so amazing. I've wanted this for so long, and I couldn't have asked for a better team to do it with. I mean, we are a family, and we're always going to be a, bit, be a family because of moments like this. Quite the historic day today for District 11. This is the very first time in history that it's had representatives in all three classes of the PIAA Volleyball Championship. This is also the very first time in history that the Lehigh Valley takes home not one, but two champions. Bethlehem Catholic brings home their very first championship in program history and Parkland takes home its first trophy since 2011. It's not just our championship, it's the championship for Bethlehem Catholic, it's the championship for District 11 and all those teams that were not able to make it. We played, we played on their behalf and that's how I look at things. You know, we play on who we represent. We represent Becca, we represent District 11 and now that we are all champions. It's unbelievable. We're, we're representing this region of the volleyball because, you know, it wasn't always like like this and we've just worked so hard to get here and I'm so proud of Becca and I'm so proud of us like it feels <laughs> I just can't describe it on the scene I'm Breland Moore for two sports every collegiate athlete has a beginning a unique path that leads them to their institutions to play the game they love for Lehigh sophomore Tim Kempton, his road to Division I basketball is one rarely heard of and a tale that few others can relate to. While his teammates proclaimed that Iverson or Kobe Bryant were their favorite basketball stars, Tim Kempton had his favorite NBA player right in his own household. Kempton is the son of former NBA power forward Tim Kempton Sr. Tim Kempton Sr. was a standout at Notre Dame before being drafted 124th overall by the Clippers in 1986. He played in eight seasons for eight different teams and appeared in 280 games in the NBA, racking up a total of 1,259 career points. He obviously played a huge part in my life, especially growing up. Um, but like most people would kind of assume or think, he didn't really push basketball early on. He let me try out things when I was young. I played baseball and football. Him giving me the ability and my mom giving me the ability to venture out and try different things, I think, has led me to my passion and love for basketball that I don't think I would have completely had um, if I started playing basketball at the age of four or five or seven like most people do. You know, from, from day one, it, it's about them. I, I've, worked, I've lived my life, I've had my basketball career, so it's really whatever they wanted to do. So the, there's no sense in trying to make them do something. You have to enjoy it to be successful at it. This unique balance of having a father and son relationship as well as a player to player kinship is something that both senior and junior cherish. They both say that over time, and especially as the younger Kempton matures, they've grown closer together and have a very special and inherent bond. As he's matured, you know, you can have, obviously your relationship evolves. And um, I talk to him quite a bit before games, after games, in, in those situations and, and what's going on uh, around basketball. And that's the enjoyable thing is, is the desire from him to get better. And, um, you know, because I did play, I, it's a different perspective. Then the dad-son relationship is always there. When, when, when he's not asking questions about basketball, I'm not pushing it on him. And, uh, and we have a good time. It's a, he, he's, a, he, he's worked hard to get where he, where he is, and uh, it's a lot of fun seeing that progress. Since arriving at Lehigh, Tim Kempton Jr. has made his own mark in the basketball world. His freshman year, he was named the Patriot League Rookie of the Year, and this year, as a sophomore, he entered rare air by being named the Patriot League Player of the Year. He had a stellar sophomore year, ranking in the top 25 nationally with 13 double-doubles. The 6'10 Arizona native averaged 15.1 points per game and led the league in rebounds with 8.6 per contest. Although his family legacy and statistics on the court the past few years are certainly impressive, it's Tim Kempton's off-the-court persona that makes him truly shine. From his unique personality to his quirky sense of style, Tim Kempton is truly one of the most colorful members of the Mountain Hawks lineup. He's a guy that will do some, some wacky things, uh, and he's just got a, he's got a way about him that almost makes you laugh. And uh, I think he accepts it very well. Guys play off of him very well. Uh, he's got a, 
kind of a, a sense of self where he's comfortable. He's comfortable just being Tim. I've never been a complete serious and stern person with anything that I do. Um, I mean, I don't really live my life that way, and that's just something that I was brought up between my mom. My mom's actually a very funny person, and I kind of got my sense of humor or kind of that personality trait from her, even in pressure situations that it, um, the thing that was not in face and it's something that um, if I do get tensed up, it doesn't work out for me. So I always have to try and stay laughing or stay joking. Kempton's teammates are always very eager to trade stories of Tim's off-the-court antics, which includes his unique sense of fashion. There's, I don't know, I'm probably going to botch this quote, but when you know you're doing something right when people are making fun of you or trying to make a point against you. So I'm not really the type of person to be scared to throw, show my um, style through what I wear. It's kind of just uh, my own personal way to show off my personality, I guess. On and off the court, Tim Kempton is a very unique and vital member of the Lehigh lineup. And with two whole years left to go in his collegiate career, Kempton will no doubt continue to shine. Reporting for Two Sports, I'm Brie Moore. Thank you.